episode 5. Okay, so welcome to episode 5. My name is Stephen Scullion. I'm an Irish Olympian from Tokyo. I run 209 for the marathon. Bit of context quickly is I took some time off. I wasn't sure if I wanted to make the Olympics. That sounds very arrogant and spoiled, like as if like, oh my God, I don't know if I want to go to the Olympics. That's not what I'm saying. I wasn't sure if I really wanted to commit to it. It's a, it's a lot of hard work. A lot of stuff goes around the training, a lot of discipline, a lot of focus, a lot of money going on altitude camps, etc, etc. It was more a choice of, do I want to do this? I understand the commitment. Am I willing? I made a choice that said, I'm willing. I spent two months in Hawaii, loved it, best time ever, meditating, ice baths, saunas, beach, everything you could possibly think of, got into a really good headspace, started to miss running. Running gives you this focus, it gives you this long-term plan, this, this kind of, I'm heading towards this mission. With running, you've naturally got a, in 12 weeks time, I'm flying to Mars. You're not, but a big marathon feels like that. As the athlete, a big marathon can almost feel like you're taking a trip to space. I'm, I've indigestion, I just had breakfast and a big fat piece of cheesecake, it was delicious. I'm in Belfast, this is my living room, it's gorgeous, I have a lot of natural light, I don't even have to use lights, this is awesome. I have my iPad because I go through the week of training. If you're watching this video and you've watched previous ones, you'll understand what I'm about to say. If you haven't, listen up. What I do is I go through the week's training. At the beginning of the week for every athlete, not every athlete, but at the beginning of the week, you should have a plan that says, this is what I'm going to do. Around that plan, you should have support work massage, ice bath, Epsom bath, strength stuff, rehab stuff, body checks in the morning, pre-run activation, stretching, warm-up drills at the track. You should have things that surround the training that gives you the best chance of getting all that training done without getting injured, but also the best chance of absorbing everything that went into that training. You can go to the track, you can run really hard, but if your body's not in a good place because of hydration, if your body's not in a good place because of your nutrition, your sleep, where your muscle recovery is, the session is a waste. What you don't quite understand yet is just because you do a session, just because you work really hard, does not mean that the body goes, hey, I'm gonna absorb this, and then when I absorb it, in 10 days to two weeks time, I'm gonna be faster for you. In order for that to be the case, in order for continual progression, you need to put the support work around the training. That's step one. Step two is that when you're actually out there and you go to the track, did you run at the right paces? Was John pushing a little bit? And so you thought, I'm gonna push a little bit. Did you give in to that kind of like peer pressure, whatever you wanna call it, I don't know. Did you give in and go too quick? What I do in these weekly reviews I've not looked at this, I, like I promise you, I'm so busy with the YouTube stuff and the school stuff, I haven't looked at this yet. But what it gives me a chance to do is see how well I did. I built like a run in school, these run in plans, and I thought to myself, what would hold the athletes back? What, the online coaching model, what, what hinders that, right? And I thought to myself, well, they like to email me at the end of the week because that holds them accountable to do the training. How can they start to hold themselves accountable? This is me holding myself accountable. Did you do the reps at the right pace? When you said you were gonna work aerobic power, did you work aerobic power? If you were taking your lactate to see if it was a certain number, to see if you hit the right intensity, was it the right number? Did you hit the right intensity? And rather, rather at the end of a week realize that you're making some mistakes than at the end of a training buildup. I'd far rather sit down and have a look at this and say, oh wow, I've, I, that's three weeks in a row I've been pushing that too much. That's three weeks in a row that I've been skipping little bits of gym, which I have. <laughs> we'll get to that. And so that's the purpose of this training analysis. I hope 
you learn bits and pieces about my training, but if you want to see my training, it's on Strava. You want to see fancy pictures of me running, it's on Instagram. This isn't fancy pictures. There's some videos, I usually add some videos over of training I've done that week, but it's not about that. This is about learning how to dissect the training you're doing and figure out if you're executing at the right intensity. If you're not, how can you work on that? If you're not doing anything for your psychology, you should be. If you're not doing anything for your recovery, you absolutely should be. And if you're not doing anything in the gym, you should be. So just because I go through what I maybe did really well but didn't do and I'll work on it next week, you need to start thinking, should I be doing this? Should I be doing an end of week review? Should I be doing a daily review? Maybe you need a daily review right now. Maybe you need a little kick up the ass at the end of each day that says, why didn't you foam roll? Why didn't you stretch? You maybe had time before bed. Why not? Do you want the end result to go well? Right now it's up to you. When it's three days before the big race, you've ran out of time. Let's get cracking. We'll go through the week review. So, this week was actually not terrible for travel. Last week there was a lot of travel and that didn't really help the week, but it was still a big week. So last week was 87 miles. This week was actually only 80. And part of this week review is also to call it, spread the message of just, mileage is just a number, but you need to figure out what went into that. Like what, what quantity of the mileage A counted towards your next goal and B was done at the right intensity to help your next goal. You could say I did 10 miles at tempo. But how do you know? Did you check the heart rates? Did you check lactate? You know, could you do a four word sentence when you're running if you didn't have heart rate and lactate? And that's the real important thing here. Sometimes people just assume that because on the piece of paper it said five times two K tempo and you went to a field or you went to a track or you went to a road loop and you did five times two K, but what determined that you did it at tempo? What did you, what was your metric? What did you use to say you did it at tempo? And even if you have those metrics, heart rate, lactate, and um, forward answer, did you check in with your body during the session, post session and say, I did five times two K, but I only actually did three of them at tempo, the other two were too hard. Go on. You were supposed to do five times two K at tempo, and that's what these reviews are good for. The next time you go do five times two K, you remember, oh shit, I made a mess of that, I'm not gonna do that today. And you put a plan in place to make sure you don't do that. I'll take a little breath, and I'm gonna get stuck into the week. So Monday was after travel from LA, flew from LA, got to Heathrow, you lose a day. <clears throat> that afternoon, pretty much as soon as I got back, I went for a run, I uploaded on YouTube, it was a, supposed to be a funny video on, if you can't be bothered running, what do you do? And it also answered some questions of what you can actually do to see if it's laziness or logic. Tuesday morning, I did a run with Katie. Katie's been really sick. Katie's my partner and um, British Olympian, 1500 meter runner. I did a run with her because she hasn't been feeling too well. Because I'd just done long haul, I wasn't sure if I, I, I wanted to see how I felt before I made a decision if I do my session that day. As I was running, my brain got, call it, call it lazy or whatever, and it was just being like, hey, I think you can just do a run, you've done long haul. I got a mileage upgrade and I was business class in the long haul, which is very lucky, but also very helpful for getting straight back into training. So Tuesday night, my, this is brilliant. My motto for the week was use the time you have. Honestly, I'm sitting that night, it's Tuesday night. Yes, I had done a run that morning, we'd done eight mile. But I'm sitting Tuesday night, I feel great, like nothing bothers me, I felt brilliant that morning, my aura ring told me that heart rate variability is okay, rest and heart rate's okay, readiness is good. I was like, go do your session. You don't have to push, but go do the session. I'm trying to do a better job of if I put a 10 day plan in place, do it. You might not feel amazing, 
you might have to go a little bit easier, that might be a good thing, but get it done. And so I go to the track, I think to myself, oh, I'm gonna be an absolute nutter, it's 7 p.m., people are gonna think, what is this weirdo doing? Track was full of people. Full of people. <laughs> I was not the weirdo, there was about 50 people running around the track, it was awesome. So I did my session, very, very, very disciplined. I think I started at like 6.40 for 2K, and I just chipped away at it. I kept that lactate under two. That literally goes down as a 10 out of 10. A lot of people are unwilling. I do like, in every 10 day block, I do two threshold sessions where it's honestly so easy <laughs> that I just want to push. And I've also realized that it's so good. I did some fitness tests and today, we'll talk about that next week. But there's a bit of a gap in my sort of like profile and everyone's gonna have this gap. And that gap is an unwillingness to run at those easier intensities. We're also willing to push. But I nailed that on Tuesday. I went to the track, it's full of people. I didn't show off, I didn't showboat. I could have ran quicker, but I didn't. Stuck to the paces, kept the lactate at 1.5, 1.6, nailed it. So 10 out of 10, very, very good. Wednesday morning, met the guys in Bushy. We did a 10 mile run and kept it nice and chilled. The only criticism I have of myself right now is that I'm, I'm, I'm using the training that a coach from Belgium who coaches the European Marathon Champion, I'm using the training that he was setting me and he sent me a long voice note and, and he guided me what to do, but he's not setting it. I'm just using the framework of what he told me to do. I know if he was setting it, he would add more days between sessions. I've now done one, two, three, four, five sessions in a 10 day period. I know that Tim might have set three to four. I'm getting greedy in terms of cramming it in. So you've got like session, easy day, session, easy day, session, easy day. Yeah, it, that's when problems start to crop up because you're just cramping too much and another easy day would have been brilliant for you. And good fitness takes three months, four months, six months. So you can't possibly achieve it in 10 days. So don't try, but protect the next 10 day block by going a bit easier in that 10 day block. If that 10 day block could create infinite fitness, nail it, go for it. It can't, so don't. Okay, Thursday was awesome. Thursday was six by a mile. If I'm honest, it was a bit too hard. So the lactate went up to like 6.3, I think it was, but it should have been between four and five. But it was awesome. I, it's actually on YouTube. It's a session with Jack Rowe. But it was awesome because one of the reasons I flew to London was to start working with Jack a bit more so that you can do all this training. You can do it by yourself, easy. You go out there, you stick to the right heart rate and lactate, easy, no problem. Running's not easy. So heart rates, lactate, science, three quarters of the way there. That final 25% is kind of like you're out there training with somebody, they start to push the pace a bit, what do you do? Do you respond? Can you do it? Can you push? That's all for the psychology. I like training with people that are fitter than me at the time because it just ups my game a little bit. I've always responded well to that. And so Thursday, it doesn't, on paper, at the end of the week, I have to say, you did six by a mile, you were supposed to run between four and five lactate, you pushed it up to six, so you're getting like a six out of 10 for execution. But in terms of probably did that move me forward psychologically and a good bit of fitness, because my lactate wouldn't have been six the whole time, it just got to six by the final rep. But you're looking at it from a more global perspective, and I think it was worth it. So sometimes it's worth it to push a bit. Not all the time. Tuesday was perfect, I didn't push at all. If I had to push Tuesday and I push Thursday, we have a problem. You can't become this athlete that pushes everything. But leave a bit of space for, sometimes I enjoy pushing it a little bit more 
And maybe that's what's made you good. For all you know, maybe that's why you're good. And if you tame that part of yourself, you might not be as good. But think of that as a, every two weeks I have a joker or a, an ace or a wild card, whatever you want to call it, and you play that card and you push. Not five times in the two weeks, <laughs> once. Simple. So Friday was a nice and easy run, a lap of the park. It was my slowest run of the week, if I remember right. Yep, 7.10 average. I just, no pressure, went and did a lap of the park. Love it, love that park. Love Bougie Park, Teddington. It's absolutely gorgeous. Just did a lap of the park. It was amazing. Um, Saturday, Friday afternoon, I go to Birmingham. I went to Birmingham to watch the, or the Birmingham Grand Prix. I was about to say European indoors, but that hasn't happened yet. I went to Birmingham to watch the Birmingham Grand Prix, and I got to watch Katie, but I also got to go to the Birmingham University track, and I did upload a video about the Birmingham Indoor Grand Prix, and you can see bits of the track, and that was six times 200s fast with 1K float. If I'm being truthfully honest, <laughs> the first two, I combined them, which is bad, but the the GoPro or the, the drone was running out of battery. I could hear it beep, beep, beep. <laughs> and I wanted to do another fast 200. And so I'm supposed to take like 90 seconds rest. So 200 and like 28 to 30, 1K float. It's this idea where it generates a bit of lactate. You have to run fast. It's good. It's good to keep a bit of speed in the legs. And then in the 1K act of rest, you kind of flush that lactate at least as you get better at it, that's what the body gets better at doing. It gets better at flushing whatever lactate you've created, it uses it as energy, and as time goes on, you can do that active rest a bit faster. I'm supposed to take 90 seconds rest after the 1K active rest, so it's kind of 200 fast, 1K active rest, 90 seconds rest. In the first, the first two, I just combined them. No 90 seconds rest. Bad boy, bad, bad boy. Did it for the drone, if there's a quote out there, do it for YouTube, do it for the shot, that was me. So, it would have got a 10 out of 10, because everything else was great. But it's now going to get a 7.5 out of 10, because, yeah, YouTube's great, but stick to the plan, stick to the training. It likely just made that first rep a little bit harder than it needed to be, or the first two, because the 90 seconds rest is there for a reason. A little bit of lack of discipline, and so... Yeah, this is an honest reflection. <laughs> but good session. But I didn't double that day. I didn't mention it, but I did double on Thursday. It looks like I only doubled once last week, which is why I'm going to say only 80 miles, but it's why the miles were a little bit lower. I don't... <sighs> I'm trying to wonder why that was the case. I wonder why I didn't double on some of those other days. To be perfectly honest, without being over analytical, I was probably tired from travel. I came long haul, it's not easy, it makes you tired. It probably got to the afternoons and I likely prioritised getting hydrated. I likely prioritised trying to get hydrated. I preach this a lot, but I'm drinking water what feels like all the time. And when I did my fitness test this morning, they check your hydration, and I was moderately dehydrated. So it's so important. Okay, that was good. So more water, pause it, go get water. It's the best thing to do, just remind yourself, drink more water. Sunday, where did I do 10 miles? I did 10 miles with Katie, do we run fast? 6.44 average. 10 miles with Katie, it was awesome because Katie's been sick. And so when we ran, I think on Tuesday morning, <laughs> Katie's a little bit moody. You're pushing the pace. <laughs> and I wasn't. Well, I probably was. But this run was cool because I could just tell mood had shifted. And the reason I'm telling you that is not to have a pop at Katie at all. It's a... If you have been ill, look out for that. Look out for how's your mood shifting? Are you enjoying training a bit more? 
you know, what's going on. Normally when runners aren't motivated, overtraining, sick, etc. We're normally very motivated, which is why we do this. We love it. That day in particular, I felt pretty good and Katie felt great. And so it was a good day. 80 miles for the week. Um, recovery stuff. I got physio twice. My right hip had really got to the point where it was getting bad. Not injured bad, but my my body was like twisted. Probably the car accident, probably a little bit of training. Right hips where I get a lot of problems. Um, that's kind of why I came home-ish. Came back to Belfast because I can do a fitness test, but I can also do more gym testing. I'll talk about that in next week's review because it's happening right now, but we'll talk about it next week. Um, from a recovery perspective, it was better. Um, good sleep. I got physio twice. It was brilliant. I, I was being a bit stubborn with physio. Didn't want to invest the money, this kind of thing. And I was like, you need to start doing that again. Um, gym. Oh. Gym gets 3 out of 10. There's no easy way to say it. I feel quite bad about that. But there's no but in terms of excuse. But I did go Sunday night. I flew to Belfast Sunday afternoon. We did the 10 mile run in the morning. I flew to Belfast Sunday afternoon. I didn't want to go, but it was like 5 p.m. and the gym closes at 6. And I just thought, go do it. Go get it done. Like I said, I didn't want to. I, I could have sat at home. I could have tidied. The, my house was a mess. Um, but I went gym. Probably so that I didn't have to give myself a 0 out of 10. I'm going to give myself a 4 out of 10 actually because I did two of the gym sessions in one go. I can't give myself 6 because you're not supposed to do two in one go. But I can give myself like 4. So 4 out of 10. It's not great. But it's not 0. That's what you have to remember. It doesn't... To make the Olympics it doesn't need to be 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. If in... I'm not kidding. If in 52 weeks time, I'm still doing this weekly review, I'll be going to the Olympics. It, it's that simple. Running just takes 52 weeks of pretty good scores. 52 weeks of being willing to even look back at what you did. And then doing better next week. And hopefully the week after that. That's, that's running. It's not... 10, 10, 10, 10, and that's what I want to show you. But it's a willingness to be like, ah, come on, you can do better. Push that a bit better. Do that a bit better. Run your reps a bit better. Most people don't look back, and so they don't even know when they've done five sessions and played that ace. And then on the sixth one, you get injured. Or you go to the next race and it doesn't go as well. Running is unfair because sometimes you can push too hard. You can go too much, do too much, push too hard. It's That's running. It seems unfair because it's like, oh my god, what gives? Surely when you put hard effort in, you should get results. But sometimes the hardest thing with running is doing things at the right intensity. Sometimes the hardest part about running is before you leave the house, doing some stretching, drinking water, having a pre-bed routine. That's what makes running tough. Because to be good, you need to do all those little things that other people aren't willing to do. I did a full video on that. It's like the full day. Full day of a... I didn't do a day in a life, which I will do. But it's like, just what's a full day of running? And it's not the run. <laughs> the run's a tiny part of it. But everybody thinks the run is like gold. It's not. It's everything you're doing around it. That was the whole point of the school. The running school was built in a way that it's like, how can you get through to people that looking at what people are doing on Strava is not going to help you get better? You can look for ideas, but you need to start figuring out what holds me back. Getting injured, getting sick, not getting enough rest, not absorbing all the training I'm doing, not doing the training at the right intensity, not eating the right things. I took all those things piled it into 60 lectures, which was nutrition, recovery, psychology, strength, and running. Just for once a build-up to just be 
clean because I don't do stupid things and the silly mistakes I keep making. And then that'll produce a result that I'll finish and I'll go, yeah, that was the one. There wasn't like a, I ran 209, but when I ran 209, I knew I was still tired from a half marathon I did three weeks before. It was never in the plan. So had I not done the half marathon, I might have ran 208 already. Or if it wasn't 15 mile per hour winds and sleet and snow. Um, yeah, sticking to a plan, following through with the build up and seeing a result that is a fair reflection of my ability without me holding myself back. I coach maybe like 10 athletes uh -huh. and I realized that I set them all this training, but I never actually like, I don't really ever give them anything around that. And that's kind of the whole problem with like online training plans. What makes me good at what I do isn't like just the training. It's not like what makes me good at what I do isn't just the training I do, it's how I do it. What I ate this morning, what I do for my warm up, how I do the training, what I do immediately after to recover. And that's like the core principles of the school is to teach people everything that I do is autopilot that they won't know about. Showing people by video, warm up drills, pre-run activation, strength conditioning, everything. Technique drills, all sorts. We'll have recovery, nutrition, strength conditioning, psychology, and then we'll get to the very running specific how to run, how to train the right way, how to execute training in the right way, how to set goals, how to work on your technique, all sorts. But it will be like, yeah, I'm pretty, uh, I'm pretty excited about it. I think it's gonna help people a lot. See, like, I did a podcast a week ago and I've been told four years later, it's the best one yet. <laughs> and that's probably because it centers around mental health and honesty and, but it's all connected. Sharing it. It's only until you start doing it and helping people that you're like, wow, this is a bit bigger than even I am. Running, how do you set your year up? What happens after you run a marathon? How do you recover? Should you race 10K? Should you race half marathons? Should you repeat the same year after year? It was all in there. It was knowledge. Two reasons maybe people get injured or tired or don't keep progressing. They know everything. Recovery, nutrition, psychology, strength conditioning. They know it all, but they don't do it. They don't be bothered. You can take a horse to water, you can't make a drink. The other was you have all these athletes that maybe want to be better, but they don't know what to do. They don't know what time to eat breakfast or what to eat and how that affects glucose before a session. They don't know a foam rolling routine, a self-massage routine. They maybe don't know gym stuff. They don't know why is gym important. There's three different types of gym. Rehab gym, gym for strength, gym for performance. This YouTube channel, the school, it's to hopefully try to educate and, and give knowledge from my head, these things I do automatically, to start to help people if they want to put some of this stuff in place and go on and be better. And better at running, but hopefully the happier element of the, what, in the running masterclass, the school, I talked about, I don't care whether you get better at running, I want you to, I want you to be faster, I want you to have the knowledge to equip you to know how to coach yourself, look after yourself, that's amazing. But I wanted more than anything that if you ran bad, for you to understand why. Because you give yourself 2 out of 10 every day for training, for execution, for going to the gym, for doing the recovery stuff, for meditating, for journaling. I wanted you to realise it was on you and not what everybody believes and beats the shit out of themselves about genetics, talent. No, 
maybe you just didn't do what you were supposed to do. Maybe you did it at the wrong intensity. When was the last time you meditated, journaled, foam rolled, stretched? You know? Are you looking after these things? Recovery, nutrition, psychology? And that was the whole purpose. To show people that there's more to running. And if you want to be better, learn some of that stuff and watch yourself just progress and progress and progress. And never ever have the fear of what if I don't keep progressing because there's always something else to keep working on. But that lack of knowledge, I just, that's what I had a problem with. I, I wanted people to know what to do that could help them get better. That simple. I hope this was helpful. I tried to be as quick as I could this week because I know they stretch on a little bit. That was the training. It was a good week of training. It was part of a 10 day cycle that I kind of do. That's one of my next YouTubes. I've done a, I've done a how does one day look, what's a full day. And then I'm gonna do like, what's a full seven to 10 days, like a cycle. How do you build a cycle in there? And then you build that into maybe like a monthly cycle or a quarterly cycle that's gonna get you to that next race. All of this is already in the school, but YouTube, it's just a place to voice more of it. If you want it right now, it's already in the school. Otherwise, I'll upload that soon. I have, I came home, I've done fitness testing, strength testing, session at the track. I have so much like <laughs> content you could say that needs to be turned into videos, but I'll get there. I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks so much for listening. Take care.